Hello and welcome everybody in this next episode of our podcast where we talk to people all around the world who are interested in looking for peaceful ways to resolve conflict rather than uh, military ways to try to dominate the world. Um, and I'm very happy that I'm joined today for the second time by Mr. Larry Johnson. Uh, Larry has a, um, a lot of experience in the working for the CIA and the State Department. Uh, he's a very well-known uh, analyst online of all uh, sorts of conflicts and geopolitical questions. And I'm very uh, glad that you're here, uh, Larry. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jacob. Glad to be with you. Yes. Um, <clears throat> the last time we spoke, uh, the major escalation that happened in uh, Israel-Palestine wasn't even on the table. And already then, I asked you the question, how big is the risk of a third world war? And we are only a couple of months later now, and the world has dramatically changed again, mm -hmm. uh, and not for the better, but for the worse. Let's let's uh, if we look at Gaza, can you describe from your professional point of view what's actually going on there? Is this a is this really an uh, an anti terrorist operation, or is this something much more sinister? No, yeah, no. This is uh, using terrorism, combating terrorism, as an excuse to basically uh, wipe. Gaza clean of Palestinians, period. It's a, it's sort of an extermination operation. Uh, there is this is not about going specifically after the armed members of Hamas. Uh, it is about using the attack on October seventh as a justification now to eliminate every Palestinian, Muslim or Christian from the lands of Gaza and the West Bank. Uh, Israel wants it all for itself, and it's not going to live with or coexist with any Palestinian. It's that simple. Um, and are we, as a West, aware of that agenda? Sure. You know, you have to be deaf, dumb, and blind not to know that that's what's going on. I mean, for God's mm -hmm. sake. Uh, you know, the is, as, as was demonstrated before the International Court of Justice, you know, just about everybody, including the cleaning woman that works in Netanyahu's office, are on the record making these uh, you know wild statements about uh, uh, getting rid of the Palestinians. Uh, you know, there must be it. It, it is it, it's reminiscent of uh, listening to the fanatics around Adolf Hitler talk about German purity and cleansing the nation of. The, these uh, Jews and Slavs, you know, it's, it's, it's that bad. And we are all aware of that. And yet it is uh, taking place with all our support. Huh? I, I regret to yeah. say that it's not only uh, the US, but it's also the Netherlands very much so, uh, who's, who's joining all these uh, uh, actions by the US, for instance, the also the stopping of the UNRWA um, support, etc. Right. So it's also our country that's very much involved in this. Now, what what I'm uh, what I'm puzzled about is that uh, some analysts uh, frame Israel as being sort of super strategic for the U.S. You know, it's um it's the aircraft landed aircraft carrier in the Middle East, so it's the main it's sort of a base of operations for the U.S. in order to control the Middle East oil, etc. Mm -hmm. And others say, well, not really. It's it's not that strategic. Um, it's more of a, a nuisance, more of a, more of a, uh, you know, actually a, a burden upon the U.S. And we, we there's nothing strategic to gain there. Uh, it's just that uh, you know the lobby keeps uh, pushing us. How, how do you look at Israel? What what is its strategic value for the U.S.? Oh well, zero strategic value. This is uh, or uh, its its value is it's it's a checkbook. Um, the um, wealthy American Jews that mm -hmm. support Israel, that are adherents of Zionism, uh, provide a lot of money to political candidates in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that right away colors everybody's ability to view the situation objectively. Mm -hmm. um, nobody, anybody that dares to come out and call for an even-handed approach to recognize that the Palestinians may have some rights 
is going to be written off and denied access to that funding. Mm -hmm. And so that's why the American Israeli Political Action Committee, APAC, every year you see not just Republicans, but Democrats, you know, trucking to it like, you know, Muslims to Mecca during the Hajj. Uh, you know, <laughs> they show, they got to go and, you know, it's like one of the five tenets of that religion, mm -hmm. uh, saving Israel. You know, a lot of this goes back to um, the movie Exodus with Paul Newman, mm -hmm. you know, because if you, if you think back then, it was this uh, glorified presentation of Israel as, you know, this small struggling nation trying to get on its feet against all these terrible, irresponsible Arabs who killed the good Arabs. And, you know, but, and at the end, you had the Arabs rape and kill Karen, you know, the beautiful blonde Danish girl. Oh, my, you know, so right away, the emotional connection that uh, you painted black and white what the situation is. Hmm. There, there, there is no, no uh, ability to provide any context. And, you know, what's really interesting about that movie, too, mm -hmm. is they do actually show the Jewish terrorists, the Aragon, mm. <laughs> you know, but even they begin to be sympathetic. So, uh, you know, and that's, you know, we're talking over 60, uh, 64, 65 years ago that that movie came out. And, I've never and seen so that, it. I'm, 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 thanks. Oh, really? That. Yeah. Oh, dude, you got to, I, I, I encourage you to watch it because okay. uh, the, the, the propaganda memes in it mm -hmm. uh, are, uh, you know, that sort of laid the foundation mm -hmm. for what we've seen since mm -hmm. in terms of the, David versus Goliath, that Israel's the David and the big bad Arabs are the Goliath. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, and it's just, you know, good versus evil. Uh, so, you know, that's how, that's how yeah. it was all laid out then. And that's what the, the meme has continued. So that's why the United States is basically supporting Israel, not because it makes some key weapon systems, uh, but because it, it is, uh, uh, you know the, the the money interests that underlie it but you could say like geographically it's right in between you know turkey iran saudi arabia etc so in that sense you could see it as a military asset also of the u.s no or, or don't you see it well I, you know we got bases and we got military bases in turkey mm -hmm. we could have mm -hmm. military bases in egypt if we wanted mm -hmm. uh what about lebanon uh, you know it, it's just the the entire dynamic of what's been going on in the Middle East over the last 75 years is really driven by the creation of the state of Israel mm -hmm. and then this uh, open warfare that, that has uh, it's been both open and covert that's gone on between mm -hmm. Israel and its neighbors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not trying to paint Israel as the, the bad guy in this at all, in all of it. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the reverse is not true either, that Israel's always in the right and all these other nations are, are wrong. You know, because one, one, one of the common things you'll hear over here in the United States is, mm -hmm. well, why don't those other, why doesn't Jordan and, and Saudi Arabia and Egypt take those Palestinians? They don't like them either. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's like, <laughs> okay. Uh, so we can kill them. That's the best solution. It's, ter it's a terrible conclusion. Just just one more question about this. You can say, yeah, indeed, it's, it's remarkable that Israel has been has had so uh, such a bad relationship towards its neighbors, and it's regularly bombing uh, even before seventh of October, Syria and uh, Lebanon and uh, other countries, and many people also. Uh, yeah, are convinced that Israel had a, had a big stake in also the wars of the U.S. against Iraq, etc. Mm -hmm. um, so, but so you you wouldn't say this is sort of a role that Israel has to play for the U.S. Uh, in or for in order to you know keep the Middle Eastern countries down or something. It's really Israel itself that 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 has these intentions. Yeah, well, um, it, it's just a question: who is pushing who? That's you know, it's it. People are talking about you know the tail wagging dog, and and, and who, who's leading in this relationship between Israel and the U.S. But your your question presupposes that the United States has a strategy, and I would say, no, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. A strategy implies you've got some long term clear objective in mind. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a plan on how to get from where you are to where you want to be. 
Hmm. Um, that's not what the United States is doing. Hmm. Um, Israel, in many aspects, is sort of like that uh, character out of the Mike Myers movie, you know, Mini Me. Yeah. You know, it's, it's think of Israel dressed like a like a dwarf dressed up like Uncle Sam, hmm. and hmm. only a, a malevolent little creature hmm. uh, going going around creating mayhem and and causing problems. Hmm. But you know, doing doing it at many times the bidding of Uncle Sam, but it is, it, you know, does appear not to be, a, 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 I guess, an inequitable power relationship. Because mm -hmm. Israel is small as it is. I mean, it's what, hey, fewer than 8 million people, mm -hmm. about, about the size of the population in New York City. Mm -hmm. uh, yet it wields enormous influence in the United States through its um, political action camp, uh, committees, uh, the, the APAC in particular, hmm. and I and I can't overstate that because uh, it, the, the the influence really is pernicious. It it, it penetrates as well within the media. You hmm. have, uh, you know, the, the it's it is not to I'm not trying to feed into some meme or uh, or stereotype, but but there are a significant number. Let's call it the, the the people of the Jewish faith are overrepresented in the media in terms of the mm -hmm. population of the United States, mm -hmm. and they get to make editorial decisions. And you don't see a single news channel in the United States that provides anything approaching an objective view of what's going on mm -hmm. with 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 the with the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. It's always from a pro-Israeli point of view. Yes. And, you know, so that that propaganda gets out there, and it becomes very difficult to break through to get people to step back and and uh, and assess it logically. I give you an example. Mm -hmm. They say, "Oh, those Pal Palestinians are they're, they're terrorists. They're killing Israelis." I say, "Okay, let's let's go back twenty years. Let's look over the last twenty years. Mm -hmm. How many Israelis have been killed by these Palestinian terrorists?" Mm -hmm. And I think you know number maybe something like four uh, up until October seventh, four hundred six hundred total. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, and how many how many Palestinians have been killed by the Israelis? Oh, twenty five thousand. <laughs> Go. Oh, okay, wait a second. Yeah. The the disproportion between those two numbers belies what's going on. Mm -hmm. And. You know, so and when you start to point out those kinds of facts, people want to change the subject. Oh no, no, we can't talk about that. Mm -hmm. But um, so if if Israel has no strategic value basically to the U.S., um, and you you already point to some major factors, but uh, I understand it hasn't always been the case. It's only since seventy three, you know, that or sixty seven that that the U.S. has been such a major supporter of of uh, of Israel. So how how come what happened what what what's changed? Well, remember the the United States uh, with Harry Truman as president was instrumental in, in cr the creation of the state of Israel. Uh, but you are correct. The uh, I I don't think the Israelis woke up to the ability to manipulate the U.S. political system until after uh, the Munich Olympics in 1972. Uh, because that in, that did engender legitimately uh, uh, great sympathy for for Israel, you know, because I as as oppressed as the Palestinians were and are, th nothing justifies attacking civilians mm -hmm. as was done. You know, athletes they're not yes. soldiers. Mm -hmm. If if you're going to fight a battle, fight the military. Yeah, that's why you know what Hamas did on October seventh mm -hmm. when they targeted Israeli military facilities that fought and killed Israeli soldiers, that's fine. That's not terrorism. That's war. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it it wasn't until really in the aftermath of Munich and then into 73 that, uh, I, in fact, I've never actually looked at when the American-Israeli Political Action Committee was uh, founded, but I think it's probably in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And so track, track when APAC was created and then uh, Israel uh, becoming this mm -hmm. uh, political issue that mm -hmm. basically uh, Americans had to pl pledge loyalty to Israel. Yeah. 
but still it's it's still different than for instance i can imagine like turkey and um uh, other countries um I, I i can't immediately think of something but the uk maybe also have lobbies you know at the at, at the, in what no, no, no nothing on this scale i mean the 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 turks do not have the saudis i don't know yeah no the, you, you don't have any other country that has uh people by t virtue of religious or cultural ties like like the israelis hmm. that are such uh, prominent and preeminent members in, in u.s society in fact look at the number of people right now in the biden administration that hold dual citizenship with hmm. israel can you mention you know, some? uh my understanding is anthony blinken's one hmm. as an example um so when 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 you go down that list, you you realize it's you know they're compromised. If if you're looking at land in terms of strategic location, hmm. wh which countries in the Middle East are the most critical strategically in terms of location? Well, Turkey's number one hmm. from the standpoint of U.S. wanting to contain Russia, or then hmm. the Soviet Union place for military bases. It, you know it's it. It's, it, it it has uh, the ports there on the Mediterranean, mm -hmm. a much more robust, and Egypt, because mm -hmm. Egypt controlled the Suez Canal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so uh, Israel's physical location is only important because of its religious history, mm -hmm. as the you know for for both Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Yeah. That's that's the only reason yeah. that Israel is relevant. It's become this, uh, it's where, you know, Jesus was born and crucified. And that has, uh, you know, led to, you know, was the reason for all the crusades. I mean, th think of this, that, you know, people up in your neck of the woods, mm -hmm. you know, four or 500 years ago, or, you know, 600 years ago, woke up one morning and said, by God, right, we're going to go to the, we're going to go to Israel or Palestine, and we're going to, you know, push out those Muslims or whoever. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't even have internet <laughs> to to organize such a thing. And yet it was organized and they marched across Europe and down, you know, mm -hmm. through Turkey. And next thing you know, mm -hmm. you've got a series of wars and crusades. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's just, you know, there this was, is what it looks like to you, what's happened. Yeah. I mean, there's it's not like they were sitting, you know, the uh, old Canaanites were sitting on piles of gold. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. some, you know, uh, critical mineral or, or resource. No, mm -hmm. it's this is all this is all driven by religion. Yes. So, but I, it's still quite extreme, huh? and of course, the med yeah. the, med the, the the religious dimension maybe makes it very extreme. But the level to which then, because the, my main question was actually like, who controls who, and and it it appears that you you are saying that, well the. Israel, let's say the Israel lobby, the pro-Israel people in the U.S., they have hold some sort of stranglehold over U.S. government. For yeah, America. yeah. If but, you recall, um, uh, Professor John Mearsheimer mm -hmm. and uh, and Stephen, I think his co colleague Stephen Walt, they wrote a book yeah. about the uh, APAC influence on the American political system. And boy, mm -hmm. they were they were attacked. As yeah. if they had written a book, you know, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. You mm -hmm. know, this uh, this book was was designed to stir up anti-Semitic rage. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they were m merely pointing out the reality, and God help anybody that tries to have an open discussion about it, because uh, but isn't, isn't that kind of a yeah strange position and also sort of humiliating position if. If Americans realize that you know they they can think of themselves as a great great world power, mm -hmm. but if they also realize that they are actually <clears throat> not free to act in their own interests, that that's kind of uh, a chilling thought, no? Or I, I, well, yeah. What, what's happening though in the United States now is the the growing division between a, the political class and the 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 common folk. Mm -hmm. So. Previously, you know, if you go back 20 years ago, you would have found sort of universal support for Israel across the board, particularly yeah. in the wake of 9-11. Uh, yeah. Now that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Now those, uh, a lot of the people that were born starting 2000 
you know, they're now 24 years of age. Uh, they're, they're supporting Palestine. They're not supporting yeah. uh, Israel. They're in favor of the Palestinians. And, and I think part of that is they're not, they don't watch their traditional mainstream media. So they're not watching ABC, CBS, NBC, or Fox News, CNN. They're, they're watching TikTok, Instagram, mm -hmm. Telegram, mm -hmm. uh, and, and Facebook. So um, they're a different picture is being presented to them mm -hmm. and they're able to see the actual images of these uh, i mean it's, it's day after day dead babies and 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 and, and dead mothers mm -hmm. uh, it's horrific yes and and it goes on unrelenting and so uh, you know that's israel can no longer sort of cover that up and get away with a lying about what they're doing so what effect will this have this change because Let's also talk about the ICJ ruling. I think you agreed mm -hmm. that this was quite a devastating um, um, ruling uh, for for Israel. Um, t tell us your take on that. And also, you know, you've you've described the developments of the the youth. Let's say in in uh, in the US is is that and this this you know new step of the ICJ is it going to change? Maybe not on a short term, but is it going to change something? In the in the relationship between the U.S. and Israel, yeah, ultimately it is. Uh, this so let's start with the ICJ. Yes, um, they're just you know some have criticized the decision that they didn't come out immediately and call it and condemn it all as genocide and demand a ceasefire. Mm -hmm. um, they are trying to adhere to a judicial process, which means you can't come in with the presumption of guilt. Well, you you must proceed with saying that what they did was said yes, the complaint raised by South Africa is legitimate. That South Africa does have grounds to present this, and the court is going to hear it and accepts the fact that there is reasonable basis to believe that there is genocide occurring, but the court's not reaching any final decision about that until both sides have a chance to present their case. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the initial notice that the, they issued um, puts all other countries on on notice that the, they too can be liable. It, it's the same as if, you know, if, if you're a, a criminal engaged with armed robbery and I buy you the car that you drive to the banks and I buy you the gun, and I buy you the ammunition, well, guess what? I'm as liable as you for the criminal acts you can, you can, uh, carry out. So, but uh, yet, it, yet it seems as the most concrete action of the U.S. after this ICJ ruling was to, to stop the funding for UNRWA, which, no, no. which actually seems like underlining or even making more explicit that sort of, sort of defying any, any court decision, isn't it? Well, in a, in a sense, but let's let's also look at what it's doing to the United States. How counterproductive that move is. The United States has enjoyed the luxury of being the preeminent superpower, the world leader, the guy, the per, the country in charge of that rules based international order, and the rest of the world, basically, including Russia and China, were willing to play along according to those rules. No longer, the United States by this 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 action is just one in a series, where you know when the United States seized Russian assets, mm -hmm. and the United States has been carrying out these drone strikes, killing people uh, around the world. Um, it, it it is uh, the rest of the world sort of looking at the United States, and you know, who the hell do you think you are? Yes, you don't. You don't get to go do whatever you want, wherever you want. It, you know, we, the United States likes to talk about the Russian imperialism or that the Russia's uh, a threat to the world. Hello? How many countries has Russia invaded in the last 30, 40 years? Mm -hmm. Question is, that, you know, none. Or actually, if we go back 40 years, uh, 44 years, it was Afghanistan. Yeah. That's it. Well, how about the United States? Boy, get out a long piece of paper 
and, and have ample supply of ink because it's a long list. Hmm. So, uh, you know, the world's starting to see through that hypocrisy. So here it is. The United States uh, is both enabling Israel ability to kill women, children, elderly, and at the same time, hamstringing the UN's ability to provide aid. It is, it's one thing if, you know, the allegations raised speak to a very, very small number of people with an UNRWA that allegedly did what they're uh, accused of doing. Okay, punish those individuals. But that's not what's going on. The United States and the West are engaged in collective punishment. And which is, ex that's exactly what Adolf Hitler did to the Jews. Instead, you know, Instead of, if, if you make the allegation, oh, the, the Jew controls the banking system, okay, go find the banker, go find, is it Jacob Rothschild? Okay, deal with him. But don't punish the people who are Jewish that live down the street that have nothing to do with that banking system, other than the fact that they share the same religion. Mm -hmm. and, and so here, we're punishing all Palestinians for the alleged actions of a few UNRWA members that, again, you know, I, I, I'd be very skeptical uh, even of the allegations that were raised uh, because uh, the, the, it, there's an entire narrative surrounding October 7th, which is false. And it's also the moment that it's raised. It's like the, you can see it's designed to 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 shift the discussion <clears throat> from the ICJ ruling towards right. you know, Hamas, no? So, yeah, yeah so... Um, <clears throat> But you were saying, like, how do, how will this impact this decision? How will this decision, uh, both decision, the the you know, in the long run, you say it, this will change the relationship between right. the ones. But on on, yeah, on the short on the short, we we see like sort of this collective punishment. But what will it do on the long run? Well, in in the long run, it's, it will compel nations to either become complicit and parties uh, 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 of enabling genocide. Or they'll have to distance themselves from Israel, separate, you know, re reject, you know, no longer continue to supply weapons. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, even my understanding that at least for some of the European countries, that this initial ruling by the ICJ raises the prospect that they cannot continue to legally provide any kind of aid to Israel. Well, in the Netherlands, yeah. there's a court case against the government by a couple of NGOs because we are delivering parts for the F-35. To mm -hmm. Israel, which is um, which are being used for the bombings on Gaza. So right, right. We will we'll have to see it's the if the decision of the ICJ will have an impact on that uh, court case, and it, it yeah. must have, I think. But we will see. Um. So uh, and it like concretely, what what will happen now after ICJ? It will go to the Security Council. Um, but yeah, ultimately, it, ultimately it, go to the Security it, Council, and and the U.S. can veto, and, and probably would veto at that point. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of other events before we get to that point mm -hmm. that's going to maybe make the whole case moot mm -hmm. because uh, I, I think Israel really has embarked on a path of self-destruction mm -hmm. and it, 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 it is, um, there, you know, I always like to use film references to bring mm -hmm. things to people in a way that uh, makes it you can relate yeah. to it. Um, Nicholas Cage did a movie called Leaving Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and it was he was an incorrigible alcoholic. And in the movie, he ends up drinking himself to death, he ends up committing suicide by alcohol. Mm -hmm. That's what Israel's in the process of doing, mm -hmm. they're killing themselves. They're there, there was a point mm -hmm. for Israel, which and it was it was again embodied in the movie Exodus, where Israel presented itself as high-minded, spiritual, committed to law. And so, in the 1960s, when they carried out the kidnapping of Adolf Eichmann, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, one of the not I wouldn't call him the architect of the Holocaust, but he was one of the key executioners of it. Uh, facilitating the deportation of Jews. Mm -hmm. uh, Israel could have gone out and just murdered him in the streets. Mm -hmm. But instead, they, they grabbed him up, brought him yeah. back to Israel, yes. put him in a cell, 
treated him humanely, didn't torture him, didn't deprive him of food, didn't force him to stand naked, didn't strip him of his clothes. And they put him on trial. And he had lawyers. He had the right to defend himself. Israel in that moment embodied, in my view, the difference between uh, the Nazi state yeah. and what Israel was professing to be, yes. a state born in law. That's not what we have today. Yeah. Israel's lawless. Yeah. It, 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 it engages in conduct that if any other country that did not have political influence in the United States was engaged in this conduct, we would condemn them completely and, yes. and break off relations to illegally detain people. Of course, again, who's the United States to criticize Israel about illegally detaining people when we go around the world, grab people up and go, you're a terrorist. Mm -hmm. What's your evidence? Well, we don't have to provide evidence. We said you're a terrorist, you're a terrorist. To Guantanamo, you go. Yeah. And we continue to hold people <clears throat> excuse me, with no judicial process. Yes. So, you know, the United States violates its own laws, its own principles, its own constitution. And that, that once you start down that path, mm -hmm. you, you destroy your own credibility. And so what, I, what I'm saying is that before this whole ICJ process is completed, I, I fear that what Israel will have done is will have destroyed itself. I and would like it, to it talk, sure, yeah. I would oh, like yeah. to talk to you about that. Uh, that that's what's what's going to happen. First, I, I was thinking about another question. Like, <clears throat> you worked for the CIA, and I wonder, did you have a, a, any working relationship with Israeli secret services in your during your time, or uh, and, and? No, not during not during my time yeah. at the agency. I was I was in the Central America branch. Yes. So dealing with. Uh, but I can uh, imagine Eichmann is also uh, picked up in Latin America, no. Well, yeah, he was down in Argentina, though. So I dealt with Central America. Argentina was in South America. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, yeah. And that happened 20 years before I got to the agency. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was wondering, like, <clears throat> how much are they intertwined? How much are they working together? And so also, how much is the is the CIA on the ground at the moment, helping or whatever, supporting Israeli yeah, yeah. actions? I, I doubt the, United, the CIA is playing much of a role at all. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in Israel and Gaza, uh, you, you know, because number one, the Israeli, I have had experience working with uh, the Israelis, both uh, when I was at State Department and then after leaving State Department, I was involved with a, as an instructor in the anti-terrorism assistance training programs, senior crisis management seminar, mm -hmm. and, and did, did and, uh, carry out a couple of trainings for Israeli government officials. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can find the uh, some of the Israelis pretty charming, but one of, one of their big problems is their arrogance. Uh, they assume that they know better than anybody else, and uh, they're not really keen to let the United States come in <clears throat> from an intelligence standpoint. They they don't view that they need they don't need anything from the United States in terms of advice or assistance. Uh, they they want they want money. And you can send them weapons, but apart from that, you know, leave us alone. So, um, and let's remember, Israel has been aggressive and spying on the United States. Mm. You know, Jonathan Pollard was one of the most prominent examples. Uh, mm. And you know, I understand. Hero. I understand that. Huh? Now a national hero in in Israel, no? Y yeah, yeah, and he's a pretty despicable human being. But that you know, I that's think a whole he, other... his, his actions led to the death of many. Uh... CIA and other operatives of the U.S., no? That I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it was more just uh, uh, anger at the fact that, uh, you know, he was you're supposed to be an American citizen and protect the secrets, and he was selling them out to Israel because mm -hmm. his loyalty was first and foremost to Israel. Yes. And that's one of the problems you have with people that hold uh, dual citizenship. Yes. Um, about... Uh... <clears throat> about the future, because you say Israel is on a path to self-destruct. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I I believe so very much because, and it's very strange to see, we, we in the Netherlands, we have a also, you know, due to our Protestant backgrounds, I don't know, a mix of guilt towards the, also, you know, we had a very high rate of uh, 
Holocaust victims, the highest yeah. in Europe, I think. So right. we feel sort of, we have sort of that extra guilt that we feel. But also like Protestant churches like in the US have been very much tied to the Zionist cause. And we mm -hmm. have political parties that are Christian Zionists uh, to the, to the, you know, uh, from top to bottom. Right. Um, but, uh, and, and sort of, you see them sort of defending all actions or defending whatever it is, killing children, right. killing women, <laughs> kid, uh, erasing Gaza, attacking hospitals. They, they will be prepared to defend everything, which is entirely unchristian in my view, but whatever they do that. And um, well, well, it's, not, that... it's not just unchristian in your view. Let's be very precise about what did Jesus say? If a man strikes you on the cheek, did he say, grab a gun and kick their ass? No, no, Jesus didn't say that. Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Yes. So if these people professing to be Christian hmm. genuinely believe in the tenets of Christianity, then they shouldn't be backing any kind of violence. In, in this case, they should be they should be turning the other cheek, seeking a nonviolent solution. But that that's why I say that's that's the hypocrisy of this because some of the 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 biggest warmongers are the ones who profess the to be the most sincere Christians. I know, and, and, it, yeah. and it's it, you know the hy hypocrisy on it I find disgusting. Yes, I hundred percent agree. And the, the the irony, or if I don't know if that's the right word, is that it's also it isn't really helping Israel. No. Oh no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. That's that is that's the appropriate use of the term irony. Yeah. Uh, it is. It's actually um, when you when you see somebody who's a drug addict or an alcoholic, and instead of you know, it's one thing you give them money so that they continue their habit, <laughs> but when you go out and buy the booze or the drugs and give it to them and say, "Here, drink some more." All of a sudden, you know, you become more than complicit in their activities and their and their own uh, physical, emotional state. Now, You're a contributor. How, how how concretely could that play out? Israel self destructing. Well, right now the Israelis are talking about trying to bring uh, attack Hezbollah, and uh, it, it's insane. Mm -hmm. and, and yet, I uh, I've got uh, you know I can tell you offline. I can give you names of people who are you know preeminent there some of them are almost celebrity uh, they're well known uh, physicians scholars that are but firmly believe that all Israel's got to do is march into Lebanon boy they're going to you know kick kick uh, Hezbollah into the next century uh, it's that, that's not going to happen uh, it'll be just the opposite uh, Hezbollah's got the military power to destroy Israel that's what the Israelis are. The Israelis think, oh, well, if worse comes to worse, we can always launch a nuke. Well, it's crazy. It's just, it's this, it's this childish view, you know, the cartoon view of violence that, you know, they, the people watch these Hollywood movies and they see people get punched in the face and punched in the jaw and hit in the head and they're stuck and they go on for like two or three minutes. Hmm. Well, that those are people that have never actually been in a physical fight. Hmm. Physical fight with that kind of violence uh, is not going to last uh, much longer than twenty or thirty seconds. But do do Israeli generals not realize this? If if we can see that, then Gans and 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 uh, Galan must know that, no? No, no, no. Some do, some don't. Uh, you know, we've seen the same thing here in the United States with. Uh, generals not uh, fully appreciating or advocating strategies vis-a-vis -vis Russia mm -hmm. and uh, assisting the Ukrainians that make absolutely no sense, but they, you know, they continue to advocate it. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it's just, it, it's, it's shocking. Mm -hmm. You would expect people in those positions with the, those credentials uh, mm -hmm. to act more responsibly, but they don't. But why would they attack Hezbollah now? Because, I mean, Hamas has not yet been defeated. Why? Why would no, they but, after the and, and Hamas will not be defeated, mm. at least not in the short term. Mm. Uh, you know, Israel can wipe out Hamas militarily, but it will come at a great cost. Mm. It will come at the cost of losing thousands of Israeli soldiers, mm -hmm. and in the process, they will kill 
a million or more Palestinians. I mean, it, what we're talking about is something truly horrific. And so uh, I don't think Israel is prepared to pay that kind of cost. Hmm. And I'm not sure the world at that point would be willing to allow that to go on. Hmm. But uh, Israel sees, I think they see getting uh, going to war with Hezbollah as a way to get the United States involved directly in the war. Yes. And again, the United States, there are some here that say, okay, uh, let's do that. With, with no knowledge of history. Back in 1983, uh, the Reagan, Ronald Reagan's uh, national security team thought it was a good idea to help Israel out by bombing Hezbollah. We, so we had battleships off the coast of Lebanon throwing shells into the Baqa Valley. Hmm. And what happened? Well, Hezbollah mounted terrorist attacks against the, they attacked the marine barracks uh, outside of Beirut, and then hit the U.S. embassy in '83, and then the embassy annex in '84. Hmm. So they, they and after that, the United States pulled out. Hmm. <laughs> so okay, maybe this isn't such a good idea. So once again, we're going to embroil ourselves in a war we have no business of being in the middle of, and it's it's going to blow back on the United States as yeah. it as it already has with what happened in Jordan. Yes. Um. My question is, like, what some people say is that, like, the the, the war in Gaza is merely <clears throat> sort of a, a stage, pre-stage before an act, the actual goal, which is to destabilize Iran, uh, and all these right. uh, these Houthi attacks and and uh, also the you know the attacks on Hezbollah, but also the attack on the funeral of the Soleimani, um, the, 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 the memory of the memory of Soleimani. Like it's some people say this is it is merely to set the stage for a war against Iran. My my question is, um, is that serious? Does the does the US really want to go with to war with Iran or it's it doesn't doesn't it seem too much Overstretching the army, etc. How real well, is that? How real is that threat? Again, I can, it, it's a real threat, uh, and it, it's based again on this cartoon Hollywood version of military power. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> whether you're talking about a member of uh, Congress like Lindsey Graham, mm -hmm. even Senator John Cornyn, uh, Senator Tom Cotton, mm -hmm. they're all calling for attacking uh, Iran. Mm -hmm. John Bolton, the former national security of advisor course. for Trump, attack Iran. Mm -hmm. Victoria Newland. So they, they want to attack Iran. And, uh, you know, it sounds good in theory, but when you get down to the practicality, what exactly are you going to do? Mm -hmm. uh, is the United States actually going to try to bomb Tehran? Are we going to drop bombs on uh, the 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 presidential palace or or the Congress or the you know are we going to try to blow up mullahs? Uh or are we just going to try to go after economic infrastructure? Mm -hmm. Well, whatever we do, all that is presupposing that Iran's not going to strike back, that Iran can't do anything to retaliate. Well, that's absolutely not true. Uh, one of the things I did from. Uh, roughly 1994 until 2016, was I script, I was involved with writing uh, the scripts for military exercises for U.S. Mm. Uh, Special Operations Forces. Mm. And, and one of the scenarios we dealt with a couple of times were scenarios of attacks in Iran. Mm. Iran has robust military capabilities. Iran is not Iraq. Iran has air, air defense. It has an advanced combat aircraft. It has missiles that can reach every military base the United States has from Turkey uh, to Egypt. Hmm. And so uh, what you're looking at is the, the capability of Iran to retaliate, shut down hmm. all oil traffic going through the Persian Gulf, which would close down the world economy. Hmm. And so... Iran can punch back, punch back in a very, very hard way. And the United States does not have the military capability to stop it. And people say, oh, you're wrong. Really? We can't even stop the damn Houthis. I, you know, we bomb them, bomb them, bomb them. And guess what? The Red Sea is still closed 
to U.S., U.K., and Israeli maritime traffic. Isn't isn't that the goal? Uh, yeah, but not the goal. But, I mean, what's what's the what do you make of the statement of Biden saying? You know, they, we know the the our attacks won't stop the Houthis, but we'll continue any anyways. What, so why are you doing it? Yeah, I so mean, that's what I. Wonder. Yeah, well, that makes no sense. Yeah. The. <clears throat> Uh, I'm a firearms instructor, mm -hmm. and I, I train people for concealed carry. Mm -hmm. And the fundamental teaching point is you do not draw your gun and point that gun at anybody unless they are posing an imminent threat to your life mm -hmm. and you're willing to kill them. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the most extreme situation. Yes. And, and under no other circumstance do you pull the gun. Well, the United States is, is pulling the gun, shooting at everything. Yeah. Whether it's a threat or not. Yeah. Uh, the Houthis don't pose a direct threat to us at all. Hmm. They are they do represent a threat to Israel, but the the, Houthi, the, Yemen, the people of Yemen are saying one clear thing. Stop the killing of the Palestinians, then you, you know, your maritime traffic can go back to normal. Hmm. Stop the killing of the Palestinians. You got it, it is when history Rather is written. Rather than doing that, we we prefer killing the Houthis instead. Yeah, well, and you know the good news is they're they're pretty spread out, and we can't find them. You know, I've used the uh, analogy of uh, if you've ever had a dog out and sees a squirrel, chases a squirrel. Well, what the United States is right now, we're a dog, and we're trying to chase ten squirrels, and we can't figure out which squirrel is which. So we're just running frantically back and forth. It's it's quite amazing the the stage we are in. And um, what for, like my my last question is actually um, before I always ask what what shall we do? But my last question is, uh, you know, we get in Europe, and this is has more to do maybe with Ukraine, but I think everything is interrelated. Um, we have now I think the sixth general or something of of a NATO country saying. That we should be prepared for war with Russia. So I think it started with the Polish general, and there was a Swedish one and a German one, and there now is this, you know, Rob Bauer. This he happens to be Dutch uh, admiral yeah, of NATO, yeah. saying, you know, we need to transform into an uh, a war economy because uh, war with Russia is very likely within two years or something. I, I I'm not paraphrasing him maybe accurately precisely, but the message is, is clear and um. Knowing that the U.S. is is chasing these squirrels and uh, you know it's actually in in quite a bad shape as is Israel as you've said it's it's like also the West seems on a path of of self destruction yes yep. like, like how serious should we take these messages from these generals because is it just scaring scaring people or is there a real threat and if if so what is the real threat well there's no threat from there's no threat from Russia it's a self created threat on the part of the West mm -hmm. you know. The West has to have an external threat in order to justify spending billions of dollars on useless defense items mm -hmm. and building weapons systems that, that uh, you know, frankly, don't perform very well on the battlefield. Yeah. Uh, th this is, you know, yeah, it's like you're watching a movie. Yeah. They hear such absurd things that... Russia gets pushed into a corner by the West. People say, well, what did we do? Well, we've been conducting military exercises on their borders starting in 2014 with Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And every one of those exercises, if, if Russia was on the border of your country carrying out those kinds of military exercises, you'd be, you'd be damn right to be outraged and to fear, what, what are they doing? Yes, but the West does it and says, "Oh, you know, you can't blame us. You know, we're just, you know, freedom of navigation." And but and I, so, I think, yeah, these generals are serious when they talk. No, they don't. Oh yeah, yeah, make they're, up no, a story. They're, yeah, they're 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 deadly serious and they're wrong. They're absolutely wrong. Yeah, I mean, look, these th this collection of generals, anybody who's a general officer in the last thirty years, they're a goddamn joke. They dress up in these uniforms and parade about like they know what they're doing. Not a single one of them have actually engaged in the kind of warfare that we saw in World War II. Not one. Hmm. 
The Russians have. The Russians have been engaged with that for the last two years in a serious fashion. Mm-hmm. And yet these you know, costume clowns pretend to know what's going on and have no idea of the actual cost, what's required. Mm-hmm. And look at the advice they gave to the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians got their ass kicked. Yes. The Russians stopped them cold. Yes. The Ukrainians had every advantage. They had all Western intelligence available, hmm. Western military equipment. The only thing they didn't have was air power. That's because Russia destroyed most of Ukraine's air power. And, and they were no other, you know, you don't just go to a, uh, like a Coke machine and hit a button and out pops a pilot ready to fly a plane. No. Uh, it's just, this thing is so, is so, uh, uh, useless you know it's it's not necessary it's so unnecessary i guess is the word i'm looking for but like my fear is if it's not russia that's going to attack nato isn't nato planning some sort of provocation towards russia oh no china don't forget china <laughs> you know nato's expanding out to china yeah oh uh, yeah. uh, it, it's just yeah. uh, it, it's nonsensical it, it is the the, the NATO does not have hmm. the ability to carry on a fight with Russia. Hmm. It doesn't. But they believe so themselves that they Sure. Do. You know what? And I bet you could believe that you could get into the uh, the, the the ring with a with a professional boxer and beat him. You may believe that. Hmm. But unless you've trained as a boxer and unless you've actually got the skill, yeah, all that belief you get in the ring you're going to get knocked out. But it's quite dangerous and, to have those leaders who believe they can beat Russia yes, China, very, same, and very, Iran at the same time. Yeah, yeah very much so. So uh, it okay. is my, my it's, very, it's, it's absurd. My very, very last question, and I know I asked you some, something the like last time, but what can we do to prevent this? As civil society, we're just uh, citizens of our respective countries. What can we do to stop this insanity in our leadership? Well, uh, the people have to act, uh, mm-hmm. you know. So let's let's take Germany as an example. The German leaders wanted to sell these long range missiles to Ukraine, give mm-hmm. give Ukraine long range missiles that could attack inside Russia. At least the legislature, the Bund, the Bundestag said, nine, no, mm-hmm. no, you're not going to do that, and they refused to approve it. Mm-hmm. That's a start. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the 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 populace has to rise up. Make mm-hmm. its voice heard, then mm-hmm. you know you're starting to see that throughout Europe with the farmers mm-hmm. revolting and blocking yes. access to the cities. Mm-hmm. It's it, it's across the board, and it's driving the political leaders crazy because they can't control it. Like uh, and and what I find hopeful as well is what you have referred to. You know the the young people on TikTok and uh, who are informing themselves, who are who who know that that mainstream media is not to be trusted uh, in these kind of matters. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the lie, the lies that have been told have just been are so pervasive. Yeah, and yeah, so you, I always anymore. I just start with, I don't care what the story is, I don't, I don't believe the initial story. It's not true. Mm-hmm. Like, like this, um, this so-called this drone attack on this U.S. military base in mm-hmm. Jordan. You don't believe it? Well, there was an attack, mm-hmm. but a drone. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been watching the only kind, the only drone. That I'm aware of that could cause that kind of damage is a U.S. Predator Reaper drone, an MQ-9, which carries a large warhead. Wow. You know the 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 drones, the Shahids, the the ones that we've seen Iran use in in Ukraine that the Russians have used. They don't carry a large enough explosive charge to hit an object that's going to kill three people and wound forty, or excuse me, forty-seven. So are so you saying this is a false flag? I don't know if it's a false flag, but it, it, it's 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 one of several several possibilities. False flag is one hmm. that so that this was possibly carried out with uh, by Israel using Israeli technology uh, hmm. in order, but to make it look like it was um, the uh, Iranian backed group in order to get Iran uh, attacked. Yeah. One possibility. Yeah. Another possibility is. Uh, Iran has mm-hmm. developed uh, a drone that operates like the Predator, 
mm. with the same capabilities yes. and and launch the attack. That's a possibility. Mm. Or that some group affiliated uh, with Iran mm. who was equipped with such technology and carried it out. Or mm. some, some group not affiliated with Iran. You know, there's several possibilities. But the point is, the U.S. is lying mm. about all this. They, well, they described it as an unmanned aerial uh, aircraft system. Well, that could be a whole host of things, mm -hmm. but it was initially presented as just a drone. But this was more than a drone. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the explosive charge was too large. Yeah. You don't you don't get that many casualties yeah. from from just a conventional drone. So this that's was something people, unconventional. Yeah. 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 So that's what I mean. Those lies. Once you you just whatever the initial story is, don't believe it. Thank you very much. Um, as a last thing, is there anything you know we are? We want to inspire our our uh, listeners not only to be uh, discouraged but also to have some courage to do something. What would you say to them? Uh, read as much as you can, watch as much as you can to get as and be as informed as you can. And they can come to my channel sonar21.com. Very good, very good. I'll mention <laughs> that in the in the comments or in the description. Thank okay. you very much, Mr. Johnson. All right. I'm very All happy right, Jacob. that we, we could talk again and uh, maybe talk to you later as well. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.